first of all, thank you for your time. And I'd like to start this, this conversation uh, talking about the, the results of the this quarter. Uh, and something that I, I saw, uh, the, the night bookings in here in, in Latin America uh, grew 22% uh, in the last quarter. Uh, and percentage, uh, this was higher than uh, the, the North America. Uh, do you believe that countries like Brazil and Mexico uh, will continue growing? Uh, we, 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 have, we have this performance for the next months. Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. Um, Latin America has been and will continue to be one of the fastest growing regions in all of the world. Before the pandemic, really Latin America and Asia were our fast growing regions. Now, Asia is not growing as fast as Latin America. Why is that? Well, the reason that Asia is not growing as fast is because Asia is more of a cross-border market. So people in Asia, when they travel, they typically don't travel in their own country. There are some exceptions. They typically go to other countries. Latin America has been so much more resilient to the pandemic because you know Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, we can kind of go down the list. These all have robust domestic markets. And so as borders close, people travel within their country. Um, I think this is going to continue. One of the biggest things you see when a middle class emerges is they want to travel. The younger the population, the more I think you're going to see them wanting to travel. Latin America, you've got like a rising middle classes all over the continent. You've got young travelers. You've got a robust domestic market. But I also think Latin America is a very appealing destination. I think a lot of Americans have been confined to traveling within the country. And I think while those borders are opening, I think Latin America is going to be a very popular place. And one other interesting stat, I think that a lot of people are going to travel across border while they're working remotely, but they're going to want to be on the same time zone. If you're in the United States, you can travel to Latin America and basically stay within a reasonable time zone. So actually, I would predict it's going to be a very important travel corridor as well. So all these reasons tell me to answer your question. Yes, I obviously can't predict the future, but if I had to make a prediction, I think Latin America is going to continue to grow very quickly. Which, which country uh, do you imagine that could be a, a better performance for, for Airbnb? I mean, Brazil and Mexico stand out. I think there's others as well. I think Colombia is really interesting, Argentina, but you know, hard to pick too, but Brazil and Mexico are huge standouts. Why? Again, they have really, like they're large economies. So there are a lot of travelers. They're popular destinations. A lot of Americans go to Mexico and increasingly you're gonna see a lot of people go to Brazil, but again, they also have large domestic markets. So they have outbound, they have inbound, they have domestic, rising middle classes, huge markets. I don't think people realize how big the Brazilian and Mexican travel markets are. They're some of the largest in the world. And uh, recently you announced that uh, you are going to live uh, just uh, on Airbnb. Yeah. Uh, is Brazil in your plans? You know, why not? You know, um, uh, the main criteria is I want to be in a reasonable time zone. So I think, you know, Europe will be kind of not as frequent right now because obviously it's eight, nine hours difference from San Francisco. But I mean, you know, like any part of Latin America, including Brazil, I think would be a huge opportunity. Like it'd be a lot of fun. And so, I mean, I'm traveling with my golden retriever. She's a seven month old golden retriever named Sophie. So we'll see what she's up for. But so far she loves Miami. I'm here in Miami right now. I have a, I got a house with a pool in the backyard Golden Retrievers love water. So, you know, I think, I'm guessing if she likes Miami, she's probably going to really love Brazil. I've only been to Brazil twice. I'm mean, sorry, I've only been to Brazil once, um, 10 years ago, and I went to Sao Paulo and Rio. So I am more than overdue for another visit to Brazil. And I mean, I'd certainly love to go back to those cities, but I mean, you know, I, I kind of want to see other parts as well. Yeah, we don't have anything to announce right now about plans with crypto payments, but let me just say a couple of things. Number one, a lot of people I don't think realize that Airbnb is one of the larger payment platforms on the internet. We've handled $330 billion through our own home built payment system since we started. Number two, you know, crypto is really good for uh, remitting money, moving money across a variety of countries where people don't really have the same robust banking system that we would have, say, in the United States. You know, Airbnb is one of the most international companies on the internet. You know, we're in nearly every country in the world, but North Korea, Iran, South Sudan, Crimea, and a handful of others. So I think there's a lot of compelling reasons for why this would be a very interesting technology 
Um, and we are absolutely looking into it. I've committed that the top five suggestions of quitting crypto or something I'm looking into have nothing to announce, except I am actively looking at it. Uh, the people are spending more time inside the Airbnb, uh, the house. Uh, how, how do you see the, the security uh, point for, for these people? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, you know, safety and security is our highest priority. When we started Airbnb, you know, I remember telling people about the idea of Airbnb and people said, this idea is crazy. Strangers are never going to stay with other strangers. But what we did is we designed a system of trust, a system of trust where two people aren't necessarily strangers. You could read their profiles. Two sides could leave a transaction review that could only be done through a secure system. We handled our money uh, through our secure, uh, securely built payments platform. But since then, we've made a number of innovations to continue to protect people. You know, we work to have robust background checks. We verify people's identity through the platform. Our reputation system has now yielded hundreds of millions of reviews. We've got a best in class trust and safety system, 24 hour uh, customer support. Um, we also do things to protect your home. Like we have this new product for hosts called Air Cover, which is top to bottom protection. It's free for every host, which provides a million dollars of damage in, 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 proper, in personal liability protection. So all of this is to say the product, the, the, the platform I think is getting more secure every single year. We're continuing to innovate. And I feel like this explains why Airbnb has had more than 1 billion guest arrivals. I think the thing that surprises people is not how frequently incidents happen on Airbnb. It's how infrequent incidents are on Airbnb. And obviously any incident is one too many. And so we're working really, really hard to continue to make the platform safer. I think that, uh, you, know, you know, we already have tree houses, we have places in Antarctica. So who knows where Airbnb could go. Um, I, I think the thing that I love about Airbnb is it's limited to the imagination of people that want to offer something on Airbnb. And so if people can imagine things, they can be on Airbnb and who knows where it can take you. Field. Yeah, I mean, so before the pandemic, about half our, uh, you, know, you know, a large percent of our business, about half our business was cross-border and the vast majority of our business was in high density urban areas. When the pandemic hit, for reasons that are probably obvious, business travel ceased to exist. Um, you know, people weren't getting on planes, so you weren't getting that international tourism. There weren't as many reasons to go to cities. And so people distributed outside of cities to towns, rural communities, parks, national parks. What we're seeing is a recovery of people going to cities. But the recovery is different than before because it's actually more distributed than before. The business is less concentrated in the top 10 to 20 cities in the world. They are recovering, but people are now going to smaller cities. You know, in other words, travel is redistributing just like populations are redistributing because number one, business travel was a big driver for why people are going to these really big urban areas. Business travel is never going to be quite like it was, I don't think, before the pandemic because we can do meetings like this on Zoom. And I also think people have realized that there's more than just 10 cities to travel to. You know, we're in 100,000 communities all over the world. And I think that people are now discovering all these really interesting places. So cities will be back, but the permanent trend is I think travel will be permanently a little bit more spread out than it was before the pandemic. And do you believe that this, this situation, this new uh, situation uh, will or, or can, can change uh, the way that the companies uh, and the people uh, work? Uh, I mean, uh, Today, you can work from anywhere. Uh, do you believe that the American companies or Brazilian companies, uh, they, they are prepared to this movement? Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the biggest changes over the last two years since the beginning of the pandemic is how we work. Not everyone's changed, but anyone that works in office, very few people are going back to the office five days a week. And I don't think the CEOs are going to dictate how often employees go back to the office. I think employees will, because speaking of CEO, I want to compete for the very best talent. And so I think the market's going to determine it. And what the market is saying is they want flexibility. And so flexibility is here to stay. That means remote work's here to stay. That being said, I don't think people just want to live their entire existence on Zoom, staring at screens all day. 
there is a reason why human connection is still important in the real world. And so I think we're going to find this balance where there's going to be a lot more remote work. Remote work is going to create a lot more flexibility. It's going to mean that the talent pool will massively increase. It means that if you're in Brazil, you're going to be more likely to be able to work for an American company or other companies if you're on the time zone and vice versa. So it's going to create a lot more opportunities. But I also think people are still going to travel quite a lot to come together. And maybe that's the kind of business travel that we'll see more of in the future. Not people getting on a plane for a single meeting to win some account, probably more employees gathering either at headquarters or other places like retreats or offsites to come together because you, know, you still need to bond. But I think that what's going to happen is the transactional stuff is going to be on Zoom. You know, you know, there's nothing faster than Zoom, just turning something on, having it. The meaningful things are still going to be in person, but they're going to be less frequent and deeper. Uh, did you expect uh, that the future uh, of the company will be something like this? Something like uh, the original idea of a bed and breakfast or living on Airbnb now, just so I understand which part? Uh, the, 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 the idea is just a bed and breakfast. That's the main idea when the, the company start, have started. Nowadays, you have the people living uh, on uh, Airbnb. Uh, did you expect it that it oh. could happen? No, I mean, you know, we started Airbnb just to be able to make rent one weekend. You know, I was a 26 year old. I just turned 26. I went to design school at the Rhode Island School of Design. I didn't really have, I didn't have ambitions to be a tech entrepreneur growing up and I didn't even know that was an available option in my life. And we started Airbnb because one weekend a design conference was coming to San Francisco, hotels were sold out. And we said, well, what if we just turned our house into a bed and breakfast for a design conference? I didn't have any beds, but Joe had three air beds. We pulled the air beds out of the closet and we called it airbedandbreakfast.com. Now we were trying to solve our own problem. But it turns out that by solving our own problem, we solved the problem for millions of other people because millions of people realized that they wanted to get paid to meet interesting people and share their extra space. And I think we're only limited by the imagination of our community. So it started with living rooms and then bedrooms, entire homes, and then tree houses and castles and really unique spaces. So we're going to like, I wouldn't have guessed back then that this would be something that millions like. I would never have guessed back then that Airbnb would have been used more than a billion times. I wouldn't have guessed that Airbnb would be one of the most international companies in the world. I probably wouldn't have guessed, I certainly wouldn't have guessed that host on our platform would have made $150 billion. None of this was, you know, I, I thought Airbnb would be huge one day. I said thousands of people would use it. So the scale of Airbnb is really something that would have been very difficult for me to wrap my head around back then. But, you know, everything in the world that's big starts small. And, you know, as long as you build something that somebody loves, if they love it, they're going to tell other people about it. And I think that's the best strategy. And things will grow so long as people love it and applies to them. Brian, again, thank you very much for your time, for the, this, this conversation. Uh, I hope that we can have another uh, conversations like that uh, in the future. And Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day.